So how's those New Year's resolution goals going for you? Because by now, most people have already stopped. We, we are hitting this weekend, we are hitting the Quitters Weekend. I don't know who named it that. I don't even know if it's a real name. But this is the, the weekend when statistically, most people stop their goals. And so today, what I want to talk about is how to help you, how to help keep going in your goals. And in a way, I'm going to help you keep going in your goals by getting you to stop your goals too. Um, I don't want you to stop your goals, but I want you to stop all the trying that you're doing because I think your goals are great. I think your driver probably isn't working. If that's if you're having trouble reaching your goals, doing your goals, it's probably your driver, not your goals. So we're going to focus on here today is taking a break from your goals and taking a minute to switch out drivers, not your goals. So if that makes absolutely no sense to you and you have no idea what I'm talking about, but you still want to try and reach your goals, stick around. Let's learn how to switch out your drivers not your goals. Hey, I'm Brett, licensed psychotherapist and the executive director for The Gathering of Good People. I want to start off this video with a little bit of honesty. Um, I feel like this video really isn't about you. This video is really about me. You know, I'm doing it, I think, more for me and helping me and my goals than to really help you, because I'm not sure this goal video has been really that productive or that useful for people in terms of views, for just gonna count numbers. But I got goals, man. I got I got dreams, I got desires, I, I got things I wanna get done this year. And so I, I'm focusing on really helping me do some research, do some learning, and remembering what it takes to have some really good goals. And so this video is really to help me to keep on track with my goals. And my hope is it's gonna help you as well. As I talked about in the very beginning, I think the problem isn't your goals. I don't think you need to quit your goals or stop, you know, give up on all your dreams and wants. I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is that the drivers that you have, and, and if you don't know what a driver is, a driver is basically the emotions that are getting you there. It's your emotional drivers that probably aren't working. And that's what I want to switch out with this by, by helping educate you on the two different kinds of drivers there are out there. There are drivers that push you, and then there are draw, drivers that draw you. And my experience, my, my own truth is that the pushing drivers um, are more of avoiding drivers. And that's the drivers most of us use. And those are the drivers that don't work. At least they don't work for me very well. And the drivers that I want to move towards are the drivers that draw us. Because those are the drivers that I think really successful people use. And those are the drivers that tend to work a little bit better. Now, probably that did nothing to clarify anything. So let's de dig in a little bit deeper and talk a little bit about the different kinds of drivers. So first off, I wanna make sure that I'm being clear. A driver for anything is an emotion. Emotions are drivers. That's what emotions are, that's what they do, that's why we have emotions. Most of the time we have no idea what our emotions are and they're kind of a pain in the butt and we just try to push them out of the way and get rid of them. But actually emotions are necessary. Emotions are what get things done in your life. 90% of what you do with your life is emotionally driven. Your emotions serve as your drivers. Now, in, in the brain, there's two kinds or two generalized emotions, you can think of them. You can think of them as positive emotions and negative emotions. Emotions that um, help us avoid pain or avoid problems. And then there's positive emotions, emotions that help us seek pleasure. In Freud's language, Herr Dr. Sigmund Freud, he called it the pleasure principle. It's the basic root language of the brain stem. And it, the 
pleasure principle is this basic idea that drives everything that we all want to seek pleasure ta-da, or we want to avoid pain. And I call it God's dirty trick because it's our avoiding drivers, the emotions that, that want us to avoid pain that are much more powerful. They're great drivers, but they're not really productive drivers. They're not, they don't get the job well, they get the job done, but they just come with a ton of side effects, and they're not good long-term drivers. Where the positive drivers, the I want to seek pleasure drivers, they don't have the side effects. They don't have the negative down dark side to them. But the positive drivers, the good drivers, love, joy, happiness, are, are good drivers. They don't have the negative side effects, but they're weaker drivers. They don't have as much power to them, and they also take a lot more intention to use and to apply. But those are the drivers that we need to move towards to get your goals. Now, let me start off by kind of helping distinguish between these two different drivers and what we're going to ultimately do by sharing a little bit of my story, a little bit about kind of what I've seen and discovered for myself. I remember when when I was just a young and dumb 20-year-old kid, and I had nothing. Didn't have money, didn't have an education. Um, I can't say I had a lot of friends. I, I didn't have, you know, any, any kind of success working minimal jobs, doing minimal work. I didn't really even have a career at that moment. And when I was young and dumb like that, man, I was driven. I was driven because everything, I had nothing, so everything I wanted, and everything was a draw to me. And so in those days, man, I, I was going to school, and I was way over my head. Um, school was hard. School was a real challenge for me. But I was driven. I was driven to go. And, and it really felt like, because I wasn't operating with the same cognitive tools that everybody else seemed like they had, and maybe that was just my perception, but... It didn't seem like I had the same smarts as everybody else. It felt like I had to work three times as hard as everybody else. It felt like I had to study three times longer. I had to work at th- things so much more than everybody else. It seemed like all my friends were out having a good time, and I was reading, writing, taking notes, just working, working, working. And, and I was also working jobs to pay for school. Um, I was also exercising, going out running, staying in shape. I was driven. I was super driven back then. And now I look at that and I go, man, geez, that kid, he did. He had drive. And I think what's different now is that back then I had a hunger about me. And that hunger, that wanting was this, was the desire goals. I was, I was out looking for a better life because the life I had wasn't really much of a life at all. And so I wanted, and I was out there pursuing my goals, seeking pleasure, as it were, from that Freudian um, pleasure principle idea. But as I started to finish my education, get my licensure, build my practice, all of that kind of stuff, family, home, all the, the things that come with success, my drivers shifted. My drivers began to change, and, and slowly my drivers started shifting over to avoiding. Instead of seeking, I was now avoiding failure, avoiding mistakes, avoiding losing what I had. And now my drivers started to become like, oh, i got to pay that electric bill because... Yeah, I don't want the electricity shut off. And it, and it wasn't like I didn't have the money to pay the electric bill. It's just I had to wait till, this, till the pressure came on. It's like, oh, electric bill's due, or oh, we got a notice on the door. We've got to, got to pay that now. And, and it, it just seemed like everything now started to be a negative driver. I got up, went to work because I... Wanted to make sure I made enough money so I didn't lose my house or, or wasn't able to pay my bills. And now I was starting to do things 
more out of a sense of, I didn't want to lose what I had. And all of a sudden, well, probably not even true, not even all of a sudden, over time, my life became more and more and more stressful, even though I had so much more. It was more stressful because now everything I was doing, I was doing from stress. Get up, gotta go, gotta go to work, gotta see clients, gotta work 12 hour days, you gotta make money, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta. And it was all stress driven. And now all my drivers are all negative drivers. I'm avoiding something, avoiding failure, avoiding mistakes, avoiding you know, things falling apart, avoiding losing what I had. And all of a sudden my life wasn't as much fun. It wasn't, it wasn't the joy, it wasn't the excitement of building and growing. And that really is a, is a clear story, for me at least, of the, the two different sides to these two different drivers. Being stress-driven, I got things done. I paid bills, I went to work, I took care of business. But life slowly over time lost its joy. Because stress is a hard way to live. And now, when I look at my goals and I look at, okay, what do I want to do? I want to exercise. I want to meditate. I want to read. I want to, um, I want to learn more. I look at my goals now and I think, those are great goals. What drives me to those goals? Well, I'm motivated to exercise because I don't want to get fat or unhealthy or I don't want to get sick. I don't want to get old and die. So I want to exercise because not because I'm moving towards something, because I'm moving away from something. I'm moving away from getting old. You know, what, what's my desire to, to meditate now? Well, I don't have a lot of desire to meditate other than, ah, there's a lot of stress in my life. And, and how do I get myself to meditate? Unfortunately, though, is to stress myself out. Dude, you didn't meditate today. Dude, you didn't meditate this week. What's wrong with you? You gotta, you gotta get up and go meditate. So even though I want to use meditation as a tool to help reduce my stress, I'm using stress to get myself to be motivated to go meditate, which makes no sense at all. So here's what I wanna propose for all of us. I wanna propose that you stop, that I stop, that all of us stop our goals. And, and I, I mean that especially if you already have. If you, if you already have these goals and you're just not doing them very well because you can't find the right drive, the motivation to get it done, then, then stop. Stop pushing yourself. Stop trying. If you're doing them, great. Keep going. Keep doing them. But if you're struggling to get your goals, your, your New Year's at, um, resolutions moving, then I want to say to all of us, let's just stop for a minute. And let's change our drivers. And here's, here's specifically what I want to suggest us doing. Again, I want, to, I want to be in a more positive mindset about my goals. So I want to suggest that you, you pick some of your goals and probably don't have too many, maybe one or two. And you pick a goal and you focus on what's your intent. So if my goal is to exercise every day, get up exercise every day. What do I want out of that? What do I, what am I moving towards? Not what am I running away from? So if it's, I want to exercise, I hope I'm moving towards health and being healthy and feeling strong and feeling fit. And so what I want to do for the next week or two is I want to focus on visualizing that. I want to focus on myself thinking about exercising and not even really worrying about exercise. If I exercise, great, but that's really not my goal. My goal is to think about exercising every day and just spend time imagining how cool it would be to be fit, to be strong, to be healthy, and maybe remember some times in my life when I was fit, strong, and healthier. And just allow myself to use the positive thinking, the positive feelings, the positive drivers of those good feelings to begin to create and generate drive inside of me. If my goal is to to learn more or to journal, 
then, then I want to think about what's the positive. What am I getting out of that? What do I want out of that? To feel like I have better answers or more answers, to feel like that, that joy I used to feel when I was in school, that joy of learning something, of knowing something, well, then, then I'm going to let that be the joy that I'm going to meditate on. And every day my goal is to meditate, to take some time. It could be while I'm doing dishes. It could be while I'm maybe out walking the dog. It could be while I'm driving to work or whatever I'm doing. But I want to take time every day, maybe several times a day, and just think about what do I want out of this goal? And think about what would it be like to have that goal? Everybody that you can think of who is super successful, has a wonderful business, um, you know, they're doing amazing things, they have a great career, you know, maybe they're really super popular, professionals, whatever, whatever you deem or think of as success, they have that because they have a good driver. If you ever talk to somebody that's rich or famous, just to use them as an example, what got them there was they had a dream. They had a vision. They had this, this idea of creating something. And that's how, it, that's how they got there. And most likely, the, the vision that they had wasn't exactly what they got to in terms of things change and things grow and things are different as we move forward. And that's okay and that's great. But they had a picture of what they wanted in their life. They had this craving, this hunger about them. And that's what got them to their goal. They didn't get to be successful because they worried every day, because they were anxious every day, because they were afraid every day, because they beat themselves up every day. Oh, I'm so stupid. Oh, I hate myself. That's not how they got there. They got to wherever they are, professionally, um, family, political, whatever their goal was, whatever they achieve, climbing a mountain. They got there because they had a dream. They had a vision in their head. And that vision was clear and powerful and moving. And it was that vision. <laughs> it was that vision that got them there. Right? And so that's what I want to do with you. I want to help you create a vision for yourself. Because that's what you lack. Your goals are great. Keep them. But let's put them on hold for a minute. And I want you to create vision. I want you to create images. I want you to create a picture of whatever it is you want and see that happening and let it, as you practice meditating on it every day, let it become stronger and stronger and stronger, more and more of your passion. And then once you feel that passion, that drive, that energy, then I want you to slowly go back to putting it into place and start working on your goals with combined with this vision. Give it a shot. Give it a try. Let me know in your comments below how that worked. If that worked, if it didn't work, I want to know all of it. And please, subscribe. I'd love to see you here more often. And if you get a chance, come. Come and visit The Gathering. TheGatheringOfGoodPeople.com Again, I'm Brett R. Williams, licensed psychotherapist. And I hope to meet you soon. Take care.